Hey guys, so this will be my last sort of miscellaneous video before I go back to reviewing movies that have come out already in 2016 and some movies that I still wasn't able to review back in 2015. I will get all of those done, I promise. Um, but for now, this is sort of my replacement for what's usually a top 10 most anticipated movies of 2016 list just because I've never, you know, figured out how to measure my own anticipation. So like, I'm just gonna scroll through the Wikipedia page 2016 in film and just like point out certain movies that I'm interested in, I suppose, and you know, I definitely won't talk about every single movie on here. Um, if, if there are any movies that I missed out on that are interesting, please let me know. This definitely doesn't mean that we're gonna get a lot of these movies in Philippine cinemas in 2016 because most likely we're not going to do that. Apologies as well because my voice is disappearing once again, please bear with me. So anyway, starting off with January, like some movies have already come out in the States. This is the US release calendar, by the way. Um, first of all, the, the movie that I'm most interested in, like in this early part of the year, is 13 Hours The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi, which is directed by Michael Bay. And this is funny because it's in January, which is usually the spot where bad movies are released, and Michael Bay isn't exactly known to produce great movies. But the early buzz says that this is actually a decent movie, so I'm kind of interested to see if you know, he can actually do a pretty good job. The Boy, the horror movie The Boy, is kind of an interesting movie as well for me, just because in that trailer I wasn't expecting the boy in the title to be like a doll, so that kind of freaked me out, so I'm kind of interested. Fifty Shades of Black is definitely a movie that I know is going to come out here in Philippine cinemas because we love our spoofs, and I just think it's gonna be worse than Fifty Shades of Grey because, and I hate Fifty Shades of Grey, uh, because spoofs just don't really work nowadays and the Wayans brothers just are not up my alley. Moving on to February, I don't know why we're getting another Nicholas Sparks movie uh, called The Choice and when I saw the trailer for this, I just thought it was the most generic looking Nicholas Sparks movie yet and like all of them have looked generic so I'm definitely not gonna watch it unless it turns out to be like some Oscar winning romance. Hail Caesar is a movie coming out in February also from the Coen brothers and again this is interesting because they're usually you know high profile directors and they usually uh, release movies that you know come out at the end of the year they're, they're, suppo they're usually awards worthy but this one is coming out second month of the year, so I'm, I'm wondering if that's an indicator for its quality. But I am interested because the trailers are really, really fun. Uh, it seems like the Coen brothers in their element, this whole uh, all-star cast, so I'm interested. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Yeah, let's let's see how that works out. We got Regression already earlier uh, this year, uh, earlier in 2015, and it apparently wasn't good, so if there's anyone out there who's not from the Philippines watching this, uh, be warned that Regression is apparently not good. And probably the first movie that everyone's really looking forward to uh, of the year is Deadpool, coming out in uh, Feb 12 in the States. I'm not sure when it comes out here in the Philippines, but I am crossing my fingers so hard for Deadpool because I need it to be good. Like, we need more, like, R-rated, out-of-the-box uh, superhero movies. And, you know, Ryan Reynolds really pushed for this role. I think he looks great and perfect in the role. I just really hope the movie that surrounds him is, you know, worthy of him. Zoolander number 2 also comes out in Feb 12, and... Uh, I've never seen the first Zoolander, like I've seen parts of it, and its stupidity is very charming to me, so I'm definitely gonna check out the first Zoolander and, and the second Zoolander. Moving on to March, at the start of March is a movie that I'm pretty sure we're not going to get, which is Knight of Cups, and that this is a new movie from Terrence Malick, who directed uh, The Tree of Life and The Thin Red Line. I, I've seen The Tree of Life and I love The Tree of Life, I have not seen The Thin Red Line yet, um, and the rest of Terrence Malick's movies are apparently like really, really like artsy and abstract. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna ever see Knight of Cups, but I'm, I am interested. <laughs> London has fallen, like, I didn't know they would ever make a sequel to that movie. And in March, another movie that a lot of people are looking forward to is Zootopia. Um, this is a movie that I'm personally not super interested in, but it does look fun and funny and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll just wait to see what people have to say about it. And at the end of March is, of course, the big blockbuster, well, the first big blockbuster of 2016, and that is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. I am very nervous about this movie because I do think that Warner Brothers and DC are rushing the cinematic universe. Uh, I didn't think Man of Steel was a strong enough foundation to build a universe upon like how Iron Man was for the MCU, but I'm still definitely interested to see Ben Affleck as Batman, I want to see him fight Superman. I didn't think that second trailer should have showed us that much information, but you know, here's to hoping. Now entering the second quarter of 2016, and this is well into the summer season, uh, the first thing here that caught my eye is this movie called Demolition, which is directed by Jean-Marc Vallée, who directed Dallas Buyers Club and Wild, and he does 
really interesting uh, character studies. And this one stars Jake Gyllenhaal, who's one of the best actors working today. So just those two names alone make me interested in what this movie might be. And next up on April 15th is Everybody Wants Some, which is directed by Richard Linklater. This is his follow-up movie to Dazed and Confused. Um, and of course, I love Richard Linklater to death. He did Boyhood, School of Rock, the Before Trilogy. This seems to be like more in his like, comedy side so like I'm I am like really interested to check this out because School of Rock is one of my favorite comedies ever. And then we have The Jungle Book directed by John John Favreau, which is the next uh, live action Disney retelling of like a classic animated Disney movie. Um, and I'm, I'm really hoping for this one as well because John Favreau is a really good director and what they're doing with uh, The Jungle Book at least based on the trailers like seems to be kind of scary so I'm hoping they go with that route and they don't kind of like nerf the edgy elements like they did in Maleficent. And at the end of April, we have Ratchet and Clank, um, which is based on a series of video games. This one is actually based on the first video game. And I love Ratchet and Clank. It's one of my favorite video game series of all time. But I am so nervous for this because I don't think it has a big enough fan base um, to really kind of carry it to the big screen. And I don't think the Ratchet and Clank games have ever had like really, really strong stories that would be good for movies. So I'm, I'm just hoping it's fun. And on May 6th, is Captain America Civil War. I mean, this is the thing everyone's looking forward to. I am so stoked for this. I don't need to see another trailer. Just that one trailer that came out is enough to sell me. Um, I'm just really hoping this affects the MCU in a really strong, like, permanent way. Like, I, I kind of need someone to die in this movie, just so it's not just another kind of Age of Ultron um, situation where, like, big things happen, but in the end, nothing really changes. And in the middle of May, we have the return of Oliver Stone, who's directing Snowden, starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And again, Oliver Stone's just one of those guys that when he makes a movie, you just kind of have to pay attention. And right after that comes out the Angry Birds movie. Um, this. I'm, uh, one other movie that's really really interesting in May is The Nice Guys, directed by Shane Black, and they released like one trailer for this. Uh, it stars Ryan Gosling, and Russell Crowe, and it looks super super funny. I mean, if you have not seen Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, that's a really funny kind of crime movie. Uh, Shane Black, of course, also did Iron Man Three, which I know some people are disappointed by, but you know it is a really different kind of Iron Man movie. Uh, it's, a, it's a very funny Iron Man movie, like, and that's saying a lot. And you've got Alice Through the Looking Glass, which is the sequel to Alice in Wonderland. Um, I'm no, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. And right after that, you have X-Men Apocalypse, which I am, again, very nervous about because I thought Days of Future Past was such a good X-Men movie that I don't know how they're gonna top that. And then at the start of the June, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, which looks like a ton of fun. I do not like the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie at all, um, but this one actually looks like they've focused up and you have, have decided on what they want this new series to be. And right after that, you have The Conjuring 2, directed by James Wan, which I am super excited for because I love the first Conjuring, and this, the, the trailer for the second one um, looks really, really creepy, and I can't wait to be in that atmosphere again. Um, and after that, you have Now You See Me 2, which I'm not looking forward to because I think the first Now You See Me is kind of meh as a movie, it's really mediocre. Um, and right after that, you have Warcraft, which I'm kind of hesitantly optimistic about, I suppose, because my brother really likes playing Warcraft. Um, I do not play Warcraft, but uh, the story intrigues me, and it's being directed by Duncan Jones, who brought this Moon and Source Code, which are both really, really cool. Um, so I'm hoping this is actually like one of the first pretty decent video game movies. And then on June 17th, we get Finding Dory. This is a sequel that I don't think a lot of people were like waiting for, but it's a, it's a movie that I'm sure everyone's excited about because, you know, I just feel like it's not gonna go down the Cars 2 route. I hope it doesn't go down the Cars 2 route. I hope it's just as good or at least, you know, slightly less good, but still great uh, compared to Finding Nemo. Um, I, I really believe in Ellen DeGeneres as this character because she did a fantastic job with Finding Nemo. And after that we get Independence Day Resurgence. Uh, Independence Day is like one of those movies that you watch as a kid and you, you it, it's really really entertaining but you know you have to admit that there are kind of like dumb shallow things about it so I'm hoping this is just like a fun popcorn movie that does not take itself too seriously. Third quarter of the year, uh, the start of July, we get the BFG directed by Steven Spielberg and I'm super excited for this. The BFG is one of my favorite Roald Dahl books. Um, Steven Spielberg of course almost doesn't do any wrong um, and Mark Rylance is playing the BFG and he was just in Bridge of Spies and he was terrific in that so I'm really really excited for the BFG and right after the BFG is The Purge 3 and The Purge is my favorite like guilty pleasure movie, I think. The Purge and The Purge Anarchy. 
Um, and what I love is that they're bringing back Frank Grillo from The Purge Anarchy to, to The Purge 3 and he was just the best part of the last movie so I'm really hoping this becomes like what The Purge was meant to be which is like this kind of outlandish uh, sci-fi super violent thing. And then after that we have The Legend of Tarzan, uh, the first movie directed by David Yates in this year. He has another one coming up later on um, and David Yates of course directed the last four Harry Potter movies. Um, so I do believe in him as a director. I'm not sure where they're gonna go with this story, but again, I'm interested. Then you have The Secret Life of Pets coming out on July 8. Uh, I'm not really sure how this is gonna turn out because I feel like Illumination Entertainment can get a bit too cutesy sometimes, so I'm hoping this has an actual plot. Then July 15th, we have Paul Feig's uh, female version of Ghostbusters. Um, I've never actually seen Ghostbusters, I'm sorry. Um, but again, Paul Feig is a really good comedic director and I'm hoping this one is good. Now there's one movie here in July that I think will fly under a lot of people's radars, uh, which is called La La Land, but I think you have to pay attention to it because it's directed by Damien Chazelle, who of course brought us Whiplash in 2014, and Whiplash was something else. So um, I'm definitely interested in La La Land, it's supposed to be like a musical comedy drama starring Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, and again J.K. Simmons, so Ice Age Collision Course, this series needs to die. Um, Star Trek Beyond um, is a movie that I'm pretty nervous about as well because the first trailer just wasn't good, it didn't feel like Star Trek. Um, Justin Lin is a good action director, but you know, Star Trek isn't supposed to be like pure action. I mean, as action heavy as J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies were, um, you know, they still weren't pure, you know, over-the-top action and, you know, I'm just really nervous about Star Trek Beyond. Then at the very end of July, we get the fifth Bourne film and Paul Greengrass is returning to direct it. It's gonna star Matt Damon again, so, you know, definitely excited. Then on August 5 is Suicide Squad, directed by David Ayer, and again, I'm just so nervous about this because I don't really see the, the structure that DC is going for with their cinematic universe. It just kind of feels all over the place. Um, but, you know, they might surprise me, but again, I'm just uh, nervous about Suicide Squad because, again, I just don't feel like this, this universe is being built on very solid ground so far. Then August 12th, I didn't know this, but they're remaking Ben-Hur from the director of Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I mean, what are they thinking? At the end of August, they have this movie called The Infiltrator, which stars Bryan Cranston, and it's just really interesting to me because I'm a huge fan of Breaking Bad, and Bryan Cranston in this movie is apparently playing a DEA agent, so it's gonna be interesting to see him like play the complete opposite of his character in Breaking Bad. In September, we get a new Clint Eastwood movie starring Tom Hanks called Sully. Um, Okay, and on September 23, we get A Cure for Wellness, directed by Gore Verbinski, which is a horror movie. And this is interesting because a lot of people don't really think of Gore Verbinski as a horror director. They know him as the guy who did Pirates. Um, but way back in the day, he actually directed the American version of The Ring. So it's going to be interesting to see him go back to that. We're also getting a remake of The Magnificent Seven, directed by Antoine Fuqua. And I know people like Antoine Fuqua, I just don't really, I don't think he's that great of a director, but for some reason he's like super popular. Moving on to the last quarter of 2016, October to December, first of all, Gambit, directed by Doug Lyman. This is the spin-off of the X-Men superhero starring Channing Tatum as Gambit. I think Channing Tatum has been getting progressively better as an actor. I just don't know how he's gonna work as, you know, a superhero and him carrying an entire movie because I do think he's better with comedy. On October 14th is a movie that I'm not sure we're gonna get in the Philippines because it's Inferno directed by Ron Howard and Inferno, of course, like kind of bad-mouthed Manila uh, in the book. So I have no idea if like the CBCP or whatever is gonna allow this to run. We're also getting another Underworld movie, I mean, Really? And another Ouija movie? Really? And Jack Reacher too, I guess. Now in November, this is when movies get really exciting. This is when some of the really big kind of Oscar contenders and like high profile directors come out with new stuff. Um, but first, another big like studio movie is coming out in November and that is of course Doctor Strange. And I'm super excited for Doctor Strange because um, it's being directed by Scott Derrickson. And Scott Derrickson did the first Sinister movie and I think the, the atmosphere he created in the first Sinister was so creepy and I really hope that Doctor Strange becomes like sort of a horror movie. I don't want it to be too jokey, I actually want this to be like Marvel's dark side. We're getting a new Ang Lee movie in Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. I have no idea what this movie is about, uh, I don't want to find out. And then November 18th is the second movie directed by David Yates coming out in 2016 and that is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I'm actually kind of excited about this movie because it does feel pretty distant from what Harry Potter was. 
So I'm hoping it's it really feels like it's still in that universe, but you know doesn't make all these callbacks to Harry Potter. And at the end of November is a Disney movie called Moana, which I'm very excited about. It's it's like a new Disney princess movie, but it's set in like Hawaii or the Samoan region or something. I'm not sure. But the one reason I'm super excited for Moana is because uh, the songwriter of the movie is Lin Manuel Miranda, and Lin Manuel Miranda. Uh, created my two favorite Broadway musicals of all time. That's In the Heights and Hamilton. And if you have not listened to these two musicals, please do. They are incredible. Um, so I really hope he gets recognized for his songwriting talent. I hope he wins an Oscar so he can finally have an Oscar, a Grammy, an Emmy, and a Tony. And in December, finally closing out the year, uh, December 16th is Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. And everyone's super excited for this, including myself, because it's directed by Gareth Edwards, who did Godzilla. Um, and, you know, it's just gonna be interesting to see the very first ever Star Wars spin-off movie. And they have a great cast. Uh, I think the story of them finding the Death Star plans is really interesting, so I'm super stoked. And December 23, uh, first of all, is Assassin's Creed, directed by Justin Curzo, who uh, directed Macbeth, which is out now in, in the Philippines, um, and stars Michael Fassbender. And again, I wonder how this is gonna turn out. Hopefully it'll be another good video game adaptation. Finally, at the very end of December, so far uh, listed here, um, is a remake of Jumanji, which I don't think we needed, but okay. Um, and Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, directed by Tim Burton. Uh, I've never read the book, I've seen it in like fully booked and stuff and it looks creepy. So it seems to be up Tim Burton's alley. Alright, so that's basically it for the movies that are coming out in 2016 that have caught my attention. There's quite a lot of them, I know this video is long again, sorry. But again, if there's any movies that I missed, please tell me down below. Um, are you excited about the movies I mentioned as well? Do you have any uh, hesitations about any of them? Uh, whatever you thought, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.